glory to God. Glory. Hallelujah. No one else deserves the praise but you, oh Lord. And we thank you. We thank you, Lord, because we are able to get up and put our own clothes on. We thank you because we can walk. We thank you because we can see. We thank you because we can hear. Because someone cannot do these things that we might take for granted if we went on today. And so, Lord, we just want to thank you. We just want to give you the praise. We just want to let you know from our heart how much you, oh Lord, love us. We love you. We appreciate you. We reverence you. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise God for our pastor today. And we ask you to give him strength. We ask you, Lord, to give him strength. We ask you, Lord, to help us to not break down, Lord. Because Lord knows we break from time to time. And for this, we break down. And that your family, Lord, break down. We ask you to bless and keep them as they go out and they come back in. Keep them safe from all hurt, harm, and pain. We love you, Lord. We give you all honor, glory, and praise. We ask you to bless the service on tonight. We ask you to bless every leader in this house. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Let our hearts and our minds be dwelling in your strength and your love, O oh Lord, as only you can. It is your miraculous love that keeps us going. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. We ask you to bless the praise team, the musicians, everyone who comes in this house tonight. Thank you for the word of God. Bless us with the portion of the word that you want us to have tonight. You know what we need better than we know ourselves. So bless us, O oh Lord Jesus. And we ask you to forgive us of our sins and sins for God. Please forgive us of them. And have mercy on us. In the name of Jesus, we give you all honor, glory, and praise. And we say together, amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Anybody grateful to be here tonight? Come on, if you're grateful, put a praise on your lips. Hallelujah, Lord, we honor you, we worship you. Lord, we thank you for keeping us. Come on, help us worship tonight for saving us, for continuously healing, oh God, for delivering. Lord, we give you the glory and we give you the honor. And we come to lift up your high name tonight because he is worthy. Hallelujah. Anybody know he's worthy tonight? Anybody know he's worthy of all glory, all honor? Come on, he deserves all praise because he is faithful. And we give him all the glory. Come on, send up a praise in this room. Lord, we magnify your holy name, and we lift your name on high tonight. There is nobody like you. Hallelujah. There is nobody like you. Come on. There is nobody like you, Jesus, and we worship you tonight. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you, oh God, for keeping us all week long. Amen. And we come to send up high praise. Hallelujah. We come to praise. Come on. Put those hands together. Keep clapping those hands. Come on, clap those hands. You know it, help us sing it. The Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And his glory above the nations. And his glory above the nations. The Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And his glory above the nations. And his glory above the nations.
Oh, God. 
Yes, Lord, he's been a keeper. Hallelujah, he's been a mind regulator. And we honor him tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. Keep clapping your hands and give God praise if he's everything to you. Come on, open up your mouth all over the room. If God has been everything to you, you came here tonight not to spectate, not to pray, but you came to give God glory tonight. I dare somebody to just lift your hands and say, Lord, you've been everything to me. You've been everything to me. When my friends were few and the pain was great, you were everything to me. When people left me, when they talked about me, when they mistreated me, when they were backbiting, when they were backstabbing me, you were still everything to me. Look at somebody and say, he was everything to me. And guess what? He still is who he always been. I said, he still is who he's always been. And he'll always be everything. Look at somebody and say, God is everything. It was the psalmist that said, God is my everything. And I came tonight to let you know that that same God will continue to do what he said he would do. He's still the God that makes ways. He's still the God that opens doors. He's still the God that heals the blinded eyes. He still heals the sick. He still delivers. He still sets free. He's God and he's everything. <laughs> I said he's everything. Glory to God. Clap your hands and give God praise tonight for him being your everything. Hallelujah. Let's praise God for our praise and worship team. Let's bless the Lord for them. I was so glad to be here tonight. The Bible says it's an honor and a privilege to be in the house of the Lord. Tonight we're going to get everything that God has for us. And we're so appreciative of you, our online viewers who are watching us tonight by way of Facebook or YouTube. Thank you for tuning in tonight to our Bible study, our altar call service. For all of you who are here in the room, there's a very heavy spirit of expectation here, and God is going to do some amazing things for us tonight. How many of you came with a spirit of expectation, believing and needing and ready to receive something from the Lord tonight? And I know this is Wednesday, but this is our midweek strengthening, and this is our picker-upper for the week, and so we want to make sure that while we're in the midst of the presence of God, that we receive everything that he has for us. Amen? Amen. I have a few observations for us before we get into the word of God tonight. Um, first of all, we want to say happy 101st birthday to Mother Geneva Bryant. I know she was here earlier. I don't see her right now, but we want to celebrate her tonight. Her birthday was last week, I believe, but we want to celebrate her and we want to tell her keep living as long as you want to live. 101 years. That is certainly a blessing, and we thank God for her life. Amen. Everybody say Friday. Friday, April 12th at 10 o'clock p.m. right here in this room, in this sanctuary. We will be having our night in the water tarrying service. Amen. Amen. The doors open at 9 o'clock p.m. sharp. Prayer and intercession will be taking place at 9.30 p.m. on the dot. And we're expecting God to do some great things. Our special guest for the evening will be Bishop S.Y. Younger, all the way from Virginia. Him and his church is coming up to fellowship with us that night. And Pastor Thomas, as well as Bishop Younger, will be going in the baptism pool. They'll be going in the water together. And we're believing God for miracles, signs, and wonders on Friday night. Amen. And I'm going to encourage all of you to tell your family members, co-workers, friends, neighbors, whoever, to come join us that Friday night. It's going to be a great time in the Lord, and we want to make sure that you are here in the room so that you don't miss out on what God is going to do. Amen? Sunday, April 14th, let's praise God for our 112th year church anniversary. Amen. Amen. Our 112th year church anniversary that will be happening this coming Sunday, April the 14th. And we will be celebrating all day Sunday starting at 11 a.m. Our very own Pastor Thomas will be preaching along with our assistant pastor, Elder Eugene Taylor. And let's say amen for our assistant pastor who's sitting in the back, amen. Along with our very own Elder Tyrese Hunter. 
They will be going forth together Sunday morning, preaching the word of God, and our choir will be singing. And then at 3 o'clock p.m., we're going to come right back in this room, and Pastor Charlie Dates will be our guest speaker for our 3 p.m. broadcast. He is the pastor of both Salem Baptist Church, also known as the House of Hope, as well as Progressive Baptist Church. They will be with us here on Sunday at 3 o'clock, and then at 7 p.m., Bishop Larry D. Trotter and Sweet Holy Spirit will be our special guests to close out our church anniversary, amen. So we'll be here all day long. We want you to make sure that you're here, invite your family and friends. Make sure you tell everybody that we'll be here celebrating. And there is a correction with the color, so I want to make sure that I put emphasis on this. Uh, Pastor talked about it a little bit briefly Monday night on the prayer call, but I'm going to let you know tonight that the new color is shades of blue. Shades of blue, okay? So whatever you have, let's incorporate some forms of blue, okay? Shades of blue. I also want to say for any women or young ladies who may not have a blue dress or something that you want to wear, please be sure to see Sister Donna Hamburg as someone has donated a lot of blue dresses for those who may not have it. And so we want to praise God for that donation. If you don't have it or you know somebody who's in need of it and they want to dress uh, to participate um, in the church anniversary colors, please see her. Please do not not come if you don't have the color blue. Whatever you have, still come, and we're still going to celebrate and praise God for 112 years strong, a strong legacy that started from Pastor Lewis' body, and we want to make sure that we keep that legacy going strong. Amen? Then on Sunday, April 21st, we'll be at the Cosmopolitan Church of Prayer for their 65th church anniversary, amen? So that is Sunday, April 21st at 5 o'clock p.m. That address is 5648 South State Street, so right down the street, literally, we'll be down the street, and so we'll be there with Pastor Thomas as he'll be preaching the word for their 65th church anniversary. And then that following Sunday, April 28th, at 2.30 p.m., we will be going to Greater Prayer Garden Church of God in Christ, which is also directly down the street on State Street. That address is 5801 South State Street. So this month, we'll be doing a State Street Marathon. And so you don't have to go far. You don't have to take transportation real far. But we'll be right on State Street going to praise God with everybody else. Amen. And that pastor is Superintendent. Mac C. Mason. He's the host pastor, and so we'll be with him on the fourth Sunday as Pastor Thomas is preaching a word. Clap your hands for all of our observations. Amen. And we want to make sure that we also celebrate and honor our pastor, Pastor Eric Thomas, in his absence tonight. I've been graced to stand in his stead tonight, but we want to make sure that our pastor is well rested and that he's getting the essential rest that he needs because we want a strong pastor who's going to live a long life. Amen. And so I'm so grateful that he has trusted men and women of God here who can deliver the word. And we're going to get this word tonight. Amen. Amen. Let's get right to the word of God. Let's get right to the word of God. Tonight I want to talk about a subject that is uh, very essential to our walk in this Christian journey. And I want to talk about tonight your dedication to God. Your dedication to God. And... Um, when you think about being dedicated to something or when you think about the meaning of dedication, it is literally you giving yourself over to something, committing to something. And a lot of times um, people dedicate themselves to things indirectly, right? And so, for example, if you set a goal and you say, well, I'm going to dedicate myself to going to the gym, right? Setting the goal is one thing, but carrying out the work is another thing. And so you're not dedicated into, to a thing until you carry out the work of a thing. I'll say it again. You are not dedicated to a thing until you carry out the work of a thing. Because we can be a people who talk a good game. We can be a people that have a lot of things to say, but yet we don't have solutions to the problem. And one of the things that I believe the Lord wants us to be more than anything is dedicated to who he is concerning us. And so tonight, I'm going to give you a couple scriptures, and then we're just going to walk through the Bible a little bit, and I'm going to give you a few pointers, and then we're going to go home and, and marinate on this word and just carry it throughout the rest of the week to give you something to think about. We're going to talk about your dedication to God. The first scripture I want to pull out 
It's in Proverbs 16. Proverbs 16, the third verse. Proverbs 16, the third verse. And it says, commit thy works, meaning everything that you do, unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Let me read it again. Commit or dedicate thy works or everything that you do unto the Lord, and thy thoughts will be established. As a believer in Christ Jesus, everything that we do, we have to make sure that Jesus is the nucleus of what we do. If you try to move outside of Jesus, if you try to move outside of the will of the Lord, nine times out of ten, things will not work. I'll say that again because we do a good job with trying to figure things out on our own. And then when we run into trouble, that's when we want God. So you have to be careful with moving prematurely outside of the will of God. Because when you move prematurely outside of God's will, that's really letting him know that I don't need you. When the reality is, at some point in that walk, you're going to need him. Because you need God to establish your thoughts. The Bible says, commit your works, your plans, everything that you do to the Lord first. Because we can get excited about a thing and plan about a thing. We can think that a thing is going to work. But if the Lord don't breathe on it, it's not going to work. If the Lord is not committed, if you don't make a commitment to the Lord in your thought process, things can become chaotic. And that gives leeway for the enemy to come in to place up camp for an attack. And how many of us know that the enemy's job is to steal, kill, and destroy? And so, if you make plans absent of God, absent of Jesus being the nucleus, the enemy will come in to take literally your mind. Because if he can get your mind, he can get everything else. And if he can taint those thoughts, everything else will become failure. Amen? Let me give you another scripture, Romans 12. Romans 12, verse 1. We all know this. But I'm going to pull a few things out of it, and then we're going to go through some points. Romans 12. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, that word brethren meaning men and women, by the mercies of God, that you, I did a little word change, dedicate your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, not acceptable unto man, acceptable unto who which is your reasonable service so in other words what the scripture is saying the least you can do is commit yourself to me the very least you can do is commit yourself to me now let me tell you this committing yourself to God is not always the easiest thing to do why because that entails something that a lot of us have a hard time with and that's called obedience don't think that it's not hard to obey God. Obeying God can sometimes be difficult. Because if God says go right, but everything on the left looks amazing, I'm going to have some questions for God. And I want to know, God, why are you taking me this way when everything that I see this way looks like it's going to work? God, I know you said do this, but... These things over here are, are working, and I don't understand why you're telling me to go in a different direction. It is committing yourself to God, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, as a living sacrifice, which means for God I'll live and for God I'll die. Now, we say that very loosely, but how many of us can just think about it? Don't raise your hand. Please don't, but just think about it. We say, for God, I'll live. For God, I'll die. But if you take a moment and think about that, how many of us really mean what we say? I'm reminded of a few people that, that denied Jesus, that betrayed Jesus. They said one thing. But when the time came, they did something else. Just like a lot of us, sometimes we find ourselves saying one thing about God. But when the time comes, we get quiet. 
And one of the things the Lord wants you to do is to be completely sold out for him. Just like he goes hard for us. I beseech you, brethren, therefore, by the mercies of God, dedicate your bodies a living sacrifice. Now, when you're talking about the dedication of your body, I know a lot of times when we read this, we could read this out of context, but sometimes in context. Well, let's just let's just deal with it, because when we talk about presenting your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, we're not just talking about sex. When we're talking about dedicating our body, that means our physical our mental, our emotional state, how are we spiritually, all of these things encompass your body, mind, body, and spirit. If one of those are off, everything is off. If your mind is not right, then you can't think from a healthy state of mind for the rest of your body to be able to function. And some of us have fell into what we call um, functioning dysfunctionality where we're in such a dysfunctional state but we're still able to go with the happenings of life day to day functions but it's so dysfunctional and one of the reasons why is because we have to find ourselves getting into a space where we make sure that our mental our spiritual, emotional all of those things encompass Jesus right I'm reminded of, I want to talk about dedication a little bit. Um, and, if, and if you just can think about it, arguably, Michael Jordan is the best basketball player to ever do it. There's an acronym that we use in sports called the GOAT. Some of you may have heard it before. If you don't, that just literally means the greatest of all time. Arguably, Michael Jordan is the best basketball player to have ever played the game, right? Many of you are familiar with Michael Jordan. But what made him great is the fact that he dedicated himself to the game. Right. When others were asleep, he was in the gym getting up shots. When others were out kicking it, he was in the gym working out. He set his mind on what he wanted to accomplish, but he also put in the work to make sure that what he thought, what he saw, would come into fulfillment. Tiger Woods is arguably the best golfer to ever play the game. He's arguably the best golfer to ever play the game. Why is that? Because Tiger Woods didn't go to the golf course just hitting balls, but he went to the golf course practicing technique. He put in the work to make sure that he carried out the vision he had to be the best. Serena Williams arguably one of the best tennis players to have ever played the game. As many championships as she's won, as many things as she has accomplished, she would not have been able to do any of those things if she did not dedicate herself, commit herself to being who she is. If we want to go into the genre of music, Prince, Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, as great as they were, they made many hits, they made great music, but guess what they did? They put in the work. They went to the studio, they were up writing, they were up being creatives, innovative, trying to figure out the wow factors of making great music and sending a healthy message into society through the genre of music. All of these individuals were only able to accomplish what they dedicated themselves to. What am I saying to us tonight? As believers in the body of Christ, not only do we need to find ourselves positioning ourselves in a way to dedicate our lives to Christ, but also please understand that in the natural, there is an area and a level of dedication that you have to have to be great in your various fields. If you are an educator, you have to dedicate yourself to study. You have to dedicate yourself to always being open to learning. And one of the problems that we have is that sometimes when we feel like we have all of the experience in the world, nobody can really tell us much of anything. 
but there's a term called being inquisitive, and inquisitive simply means always being eager to learn. You have a willingness to learn, so no matter what experience has taught you, we always need to be open to learning new things. Let me prove my point. The reason why we need to be open to learning new things is because now technology has advanced at a whole nother level. Certain things that we still don't understand how it works, but I can tell you the kids that I teach every day are teaching me things on another level to the point where they can literally type into a system and say, hey, my teacher assigned me a five-page paper on how to cook oxtails and it will literally write you a five page paper in less than 30 seconds for you to print and turn it in this is how technology is advancing and I'm going to be honest with you we have to dedicate ourselves to a sense of learning so that we can always be on the up and up The Bible says that the devil goes to and fro seeking whom he may devour. One of the things that the devil is going to attack is the mind. But here's one thing about it. One thing that somebody can't take from you is your knowledge. And always being open to learning and how to combat and learning how to fight. I'm speaking in the natural but also in the spirit but also making sure that you strengthen your state of mind to be able to do that. Because Please believe that the enemy is advancing just as times are advancing. He's advancing in our music. He's advancing on social media. He's advancing in technology. The enemy is advancing with the times using that as a tactic to taint and take over the people of God. One of the things that we have to really be cautious of is making sure that we stay on guard. And keep our guard up, not just in prayer, but also in the natural. Keep your eyes open, knowing what the enemy is going to do so that we can be on the up and up. I want to give you a few biblical examples of what dedication to God looks like. So let's deal with Abraham. Let's deal with Abraham's dedication to God. Because I can understand from a parental perspective that one of the most difficult things for me to have to do is to sacrifice my baby. I could never see myself sacrificing Brooke. One of the hardest things to have to do as a parent is to put your child on the line when it is your responsibility to fight for them and protect them at all costs. And here it is, Abraham is commissioned by God to sacrifice his son Isaac and what we see in the text I won't deal with all of it but what we see in the text is Abraham's dedication to obedience Abraham in spite of what he did not want to do obeyed God and in the midst of it the Lord sent a ram out of the bush because of his obedience and so because you were willing to do what I told you to do and submit to my will, I'm going to send you something else so that your son can be preserved. And one of the things that I want to tell us tonight and I want you to grab hold to of the fact is that when God tells you to do something, do it. When the Lord gives you an instruction, if you don't understand it, pray about it, but let the Lord deal with you with it. Because a lot of times we try to seek our own answers to fix problems and we end up putting ourselves in a deeper hole. Because we don't want to listen to God. And I'm going to be honest with you. Your agenda, your personal agenda will never supersede God. Just when you thought you had it all worked out and you thought you had all of the pieces of the puzzle put there together. If God is not in it, it's not working. And so let's find ourselves making God, Jesus, the nucleus of what we do. Let's talk about Noah. Noah had faith nobody else could see. When you have to hear from a God that you don't see, that nobody else doesn't see or understand, and he tells you, I need you to build an ark. And then you have to go amongst the people and tell the people 
God told me to build an ark because it's going to rain. And they looking in the sky, and sunny skies and clear days, and they saying, it's going to rain. Who is this God you speak of? Because what you're telling me you see, we don't see that. That's not in the forecast. The news correspondent's not even talking about rain. But you're telling us it's going to rain. And he had to have faith that nobody else could see. So he dedicated himself to the will of God. And sometimes we get in those spaces where we have to literally say, and I'm going to deal with this when I get to Jesus. But it's not about my will. It's about what God said. And sometimes you got to be willing to put yourself on the line that when nobody else understands what God told you to do. You've got to find yourself operating in a spirit of obedience. Because what ended up happening was those who did not adhere to the warning from Noah, God preserved him and his family. And the city, the nation was wiped out because they did not he adhere to the voice of God. Now, I want to talk a little bit about Mary from a woman's perspective because Mary had the task where she had to literally dedicate herself to an assignment. She had to dedicate herself to an assignment because as a virgin, somebody who's never had intercourse or been with a man, for an angel to come and tell you, guess what? <laughs> you about to birth the savior of the world and his name is going to be Jesus. So not only did you tell me what I'm going and you know, one of, now this is how I know. <laughs> I just feel like Mary had a little blackness in her because I'm going to tell you this. How, you know, one of the things that you can't do is just tell a black woman what she going to do. Not without a fight. And Mary had to talk back to the angel. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. I'm going to have what? The angel told her, you're going to bear a son, the savior of the world, and his name is going to be called Jesus. And this has to happen so that scripture can be fulfilled. What do you do when you are a part of the promise that you had no idea about? And God uses you as the birth tunnel to push out purpose. Do you find, oh my God, do you find yourself sometimes in a position to where God wants to use you, but because you have so many questions on your mind and in your head, you fail to realize that what God wants to do through you is for the greater good. It's not about you. But it's about his will and his purpose being fulfilled. And so Mary had the honor of birthing the savior of the world through her dedication to the assignment. Let's talk about Job a little bit. Job dedicated himself in the midst of affliction. How difficult is it to commit yourself to God and dedicate yourself to serving God when you serve a God who's a healer and you serve a God who's a way maker and you serve a God that can dry up sickness at the snap of his finger but at the same time he makes you go through when he can take it away how difficult is it for Job to say through pain and misery I'm going to lock into faith and believe God. Now, Job lost a lot of stuff based on what he believed out of obedience. He lost his livestock and his cattle. That's finances. So he struggled financially. Job actually, what we would call a famine. Job had a little famine in his life because he lost what was making him money, his resources. Not only did he, lose, he lost that, but he lost his family. Children, dead, wife, gone. And she tells him the person that's supposed to be connected to him, his rib, standing with him in the midst of, curse God and die. What do you do? And this, woo, you got to watch who's in your camp. What happens when the people that are the closest to you don't understand the God in you enough 
that carries out purpose and they desert you. And in the midst of affliction, you still got to do the task. Lift your hands real quick and say, God, I thank you for good company. Whew. In the midst of pain and misery, Job had to lock into his faith. His faith in God to say, naked I came into this world. And then naked I will return. Because I understand that in the midst of this place of affliction, The Lord gives and he takes away. And in the midst of him taking away the very thing that I love, blessed be. How many, ooh, God help me tonight. How many of you have ever found yourself in a space where it just feels like God is taking everything away from you that has meaning to you, but is for the greater good? You still have to say with everything in you, for God I'll live, for God I'll die. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. Whew. Let's deal with Jesus. The dedication of Jesus Christ so that scripture would be fulfilled. Jesus finds himself in the garden and he tells his disciples, stay here while I go and pray. Those he told to stay while he went to pray, they went to sleep. What happens? When you got to carry out an assignment and people go to sleep on you. Jesus handpicked 12 disciples and he said, follow me. I want y'all to be in close proximity of me because I need you to walk everywhere that I go. But we later realized that even when he had the 12, then he had the three. Because everybody that was in the 12 didn't have the capacity to go with him up. So he had to take the three, Peter, James, and John. But what happens When scripture has to be fulfilled and you still got to find yourself dedicating yourself to a cross experience. You still have the assignment to carry out the task given by your father. And in the garden, Jesus gives out a plea. He had a very humanistic experience. He says, Father, I hear what you're saying. I know what you want me to do. But can you just remove this bitter cup? I don't have the capacity to carry out this task. But you're telling me that I have to go through affliction so that scripture can be fulfilled. So I have to dedicate myself to a hard thing. And what happens in our lives when we can't run away from the hard thing? You find yourself having to say yes and surrender to a very hard place. But Jesus had to carry out the task. All of these are examples of what it looks like to be totally dedicated to God. Because as you can see, there is a greater good that comes on the other side of what doesn't look like light at the end of the tunnel.
the journey of dedication to God, there are a few things that it looks like, and I'm going to be done, y'all. Number one, on your journey of dedication to God, you have to mean who you serve. You got, let me tell you something. A lot of people call his name, but they don't mean his name. A lot of people say Jesus when there's trouble. But when everything is going fine, they ain't thinking about them. We even find unbelievers when they get in trouble saying things like, oh, my God. But they don't really mean God. They just know. And it isn't it something to know that you don't got to be a believer to know his capability. You're not a believer, but you're calling on a name that's greater than any other name for help. And this is why I believe when the Bible says every knee is going to bow. It's proven in our everyday ways of living because non-believers call on his name indirectly. Whew. You have to mean who you serve. And I just believe as believers, as believers, many of us have been in God a long time. But as believers, we have to mean this thing and we can't play with it. There are people who play church. There are people who play God. But the way this world is set up, y'all, we don't have time to come in here and play. You don't have time to play at home. Because anywhere you go, you can make a sanctuary and give God glory. You don't have to be in the vicinity of these four walls. But you got to mean this thing. And if Jesus is who you're going to live for, then let Jesus be who you live for. Don't be sometimes he with him. Which is going to take me into my number two. Don't be sometimes he with him. And you got a number two. Caution yourself of tainted company and perspectives. You have to caution yourself of tainted company. Notice I didn't say company. I put an adjective on it. Tainted company and perspective. Because there's a lot of people that got a lot to say that ain't saying nothing. It's a lot of people who talk a lot and complain a lot but have never been a solutionist in their life. We got people who complain, no solution. They should have did this. You don't show up to anything. You don't offer your services. You don't come to serve. But you have something to say about everything. Caution yourself. And I'm always grateful anytime God opens up doors of opportunity for me to go into spaces, whether that is corporate, whether that is because of ministry opportunities to sit amongst people who are smarter than me and who are on the up and up. The reason being is because it gives me an opportunity to glean from a wisdom perspective, a healthy wisdom perspective. Because wisdom ain't always wisdom if there's a hidden agenda. Some people say wisdom when it's really a hidden agenda to keep you down. So this is why you have to be company of you have to be careful of the company that you keep because sometimes they offer taintedness. People don't always want to see you go up, especially when they don't have nothing to live for. And sometimes we find ourselves overworking ourselves for others who don't want better. We find ourselves overworking ourselves for people who just don't want better. No matter what you say, how many meetings you have with them, how many times you pray for them, how many times you get on the flow, how many times you fast, they don't want better. And so in this season, you ain't going to kill yourself for nobody who don't want God. If they don't want them, then they just won't have them because you don't got time to waste. God has been too good for you and too good to you. 
and he's too busy trying to take you on the up and up so you don't have time to go on the down and down. Tainted company. Tainted perspectives. Every perspective is not a healthy perspective. And let me say this. A perspective is opinionated. It's not fact. Your perspective will always be acceptable. You want to know why? Because it's yours. You own it. That's your opinion. That's your opinion. So if Elder Phillips tells me that oranges are better than apples, guess what? Oranges are better than apples, according to her. That's her opinion. But that don't mean I don't, I don't disagree or agree, because I can say that grapes are better than both. That's my opinion. That's a perspective. So you got to be careful of people that try to give you wisdom when it's really perspective that holds no weight. You have to mean who you serve. That's number one. You have to mean who you serve. Number two, you have to caution yourself of tainted company and tainted perspective. And we hear this all, all the time around here. I know many of you grew up on this, but watch your associates. Watch who you call friend. Watch who you call brother. Watch who you call sister. Watch who you allow your children's grandparents, or, I'm sorry, godparents to be. Everybody can't hold your child. Everybody can't hold your grandchildren. They can't go over everybody's house. And if it's different for you, it's different for you. But because we believe that spirits transfer, you've got to watch who's in your camp. Because if you let the wrong thing in your camp, it becomes problematic and chaotic. This is why our spirit of discernment has to be heightened at another level. So that you can tell a good friend from a demon. And you can tell the difference from somebody who means well versus somebody who's trying to cause hell and confusion in your life. You've got to know the difference. And that only comes through making Jesus your nucleus. You have to give way to the Holy Ghost. As Jesus said, not my will, but your will be. Isn't it so? And, uh, Jesus is all powerful, all knowing, can do anything. Miracle signs and wonders. But yet he still says, not my will, when he has the capacity to do everything. So if Jesus has the capacity to do everything and says, not my will, what makes sure you think that you can do it in yours? That math ain't mathing. It ain't working. Give it to Jesus. You have to mean who you serve. Number two, caution yourself of tainted company and perspective. My last one. On the journey of dedication to God, there are benefits when you serve and dedicate yourself to God. There are benefits when you serve and dedicate yourself to God. I'll say this and then I'll be done. Benefits serving and dedicating yourself to God. When I look at the promises of God in the Bible, all throughout the Bible, God was instrumental. Jesus was instrumental in saying, if you do this, then I will do this. Right? If you do, then I will. If you do, then I will. Not I will before you do. Because I'm not doing nothing until you do. And sometimes we find ourselves in spaces where we feel like, well, God, you should do this because I did. Absolutely not. God don't owe us nothing. He already gave us everything when he gave his son. 
So if he gives, if he never gives you another thing, he gave you Jesus. Woo. I said he gave you Jesus. So if he never opened up another door, if he never gave you another dollar in your pocket, if he never did anything else for you, you already got enough when he gave you Jesus. And because you got Jesus, you got the gift of eternal life. And when you open up your mouth and confess that Jesus is Lord, when you leave from this earth and you're caught up in the rapture, you're going to have eternal life and glory. That's enough. Whew. Benefits. There are benefits. The benefit for Abraham, I'll send you a ram in the bush because you obeyed me. Preserve Isaac. I'm going to preserve your seed that you was willing to put on the line because of your obedience. So let me send you provision. Jehovah Jireh. The God who provides. Mary. Even though you didn't understand or comprehend what the angel of the Lord was saying to you about being a woman who's never been with a man and you still decided to be open to giving birth to the savior of the world. The benefit is, one, you are his mother. <laughs> you gave birth to the savior of the world. What a benefit. And you fulfilled scripture by giving birth to purpose. That's a benefit. If you do this, then I will. Noah, they didn't understand it, but I still got to do it. What's the benefit? Family preserved, your life preserved, it rained, however, you were saved everything else wiped out if you do what I tell you to do even if you don't comprehend or understand in the end the bottom line is benefits and nothing supersedes the benefits of God Jesus Father why hast thou forsaken me why would you put me on the line to do this? I'm your son. I'm your son. These people literally have crucified me, have defamed me, ridiculed me. They beat me. They've spat on me, pierced me in my side. And you telling me this is all for the greater good? Phew. The benefit. Not only are you going to die, but I'm so God that I'm going to let you get up after you die. And for somebody in the room, you may feel like you are in dying situations, not physically, maybe in your mental, maybe just in your everyday, day-to-day -day routines. You just feel like something is dying. But because Jesus died already and he was able to get up, you ain't no different. You're going to get up too. Get up from that dead place and walk. Your dedication to God matters. And if I can be honest with you all, one of, thank you, one of the greatest things that you can do in your Christian walk is to be sold out for God. Let them call you a holy roller. Let them say what they're going to say. And I've come to find out that people that have a lot to say about people who are sold out for God, they're going to end up being your assignment. It's always the people who have a lot to say. And God fixes them by allowing trouble to come, but then sending you as the messenger to help solve the issue whether that's through prayer intercession words of wisdom or just by how you live your everyday life living epistle seen in red 
you ain't always got to say something for you to be influential. Just live it. Live this thing. Even when life is life, God be God. God will show up when you least expect. But just because things go a little topsy-turvy, do not lose your dedication and service to God. In Jesus' name, clap your hands. Whew. Clap your hands if you were blessed by the word tonight. A, as a millennial in Christ, I'm speaking of myself, the age of 33, and probably many of those who are around my age, but not just millennials, everybody in the room, but I'm just specifically speaking in regards to myself. You know, the world has a way of always having the latest trends where the world tries to define you to be something. And when you decide to live differently and do differently, you're faced and set yourself up for ridicule. People don't understand why you got to go to church so much and why you give so much service to God. They don't understand. A lot of times you have to ask God, God, are you sure? <laughs> Me? He says, why not you? And so you find yourself committing to his will, to the ways of God, for the greater good. And I'm going to tell you, as a millennial in Christ, I've been in Christ a long time, and many of you can attest to what I'm about to say. It's a blessing to be in the will of God. It's a blessing to be in his presence. And it's a blessing to call Jesus Savior. And I wouldn't have it no other way, and I'm sure you wouldn't either. To God be the glory. Clap your hands again if you were blessed by the word. Amen. I want to offer Christ to somebody tonight. There may be somebody here or online watching who you not might, you might not be 100% sure that if you die tonight, you'll spend eternity with Jesus Christ. But I came to let you know that in your Christian walk, we can attest to this that there are going to be some ups and downs every day is not going to be sunny there's some cloudy days there's some rainy days there are even some foggy days but in the midst of it all Jesus is still there and I serve a God that when it's foggy and when it's raining he can bring about sunny skies and he can change your morning into joyfulness and happiness and who wouldn't want to serve a savior like that? And so we offer Christ to you tonight. If you're interested in joining our church or being a part of just the kingdom of God, our information is on the screen online. You can email us at newmembers at ghmbcchicago.org. If you are in the room and you're not 100% sure that if you die tonight, you'll spend eternity with him, feel free to walk to this altar. If you need prayer, we'll pray with you. Our ministers and elders are here in position to do so. And we're here to service you. And there is always room in the kingdom of God and here at our church. We're welcoming family and we'll receive you in Jesus' name. So here's there one. Amen. Let's clap our hands because everybody is saved tonight. Glory to God. Whew. Look at somebody and tell them, I am dedicating myself to God. Yeah, I'm dedicating myself to God. Amen. Glory to God. I was blessed myself by that word. And I just thank God for what he spoke tonight. Let's remember all of our announcements. And of course, we're going to reiterate those announcements on Sunday. Remember, Sunday is our church anniversary celebrating 112 years. And so we are grateful for the legacy of this church and 
all of the things that have happened for this church and I still believe as well as I know you do that our church is going to be 100% debt free in Jesus name and you never know the Lord might show up on Sunday and pay it off you just never know that'll be a great anniversary gift right so God we believe in you for that too so let's do, do me a favor let's prepare a great seed tonight to sow into this ministry this is good fertile soil we want to sow into good ground. Let's give a good seed tonight. I'm not going to put a number on it, but whatever the Lord is speaking to you, what he's put on your heart, let's sow that tonight in good faith. Call it a dedication seed. Let's give a good dedication seed tonight. Whatever that is for you, whether it's $20, whether it's $2, whatever you have, sow into it. If you don't have anything, I would just beckon you to just touch the basket and let the Lord bless you this week. I understand sometimes we could be in between blessings, but even in the in-between, God is present. And so if you don't have anything, feel free to touch the basket. Once you have that seed, just come from where you are, and you can give. Junior Deacon is here, and then you can swipe on the side. If you want to give a seed online, our ways to give are on the screen. You can cash app us. You can also zell us. You can do it via our website. Or you can drop it off here at the church during normal business hours. There are several ways that you can give your seed. And we thank you for all of your seeds tonight, the things that you are giving. God bless all of you, and I pray that God will give it back 1,000 fold. Every need that you need met this week, before the end of the week, before Sunday, God will do it. We all have deadlines. We all have things that we need to meet. And so we're believing God to do the rest. Amen. Amen. Thank God for Jesus. Remember on Sunday, it's our anniversary. We are in shades of what church? Shades of blue. Okay, so we're no longer doing red. We are in shades of blue. So let's come out and have a great time in the Lord all day, 11 o'clock a.m., 3 p.m., and then 7 p.m. We don't do that regularly, but we're going to hang out all day Sunday. So make sure that you are well rested and prepared for Sunday. Pastor is asking all of the members of Greater Harvest to be in place and present. And we want to make sure that we're just together celebrating uh, our church anniversary and just the good things that are happening at this church. Amen. Some dynamic preaching in the morning. Pastor Thomas and Elder Taylor and Elder Tyrese Hunter will be bringing the word together. Then at 3 o'clock, Pastor Charlie Dates of House of Hope and Progressive Missionary Baptist Church. They will be with us at 3 o'clock. And then at 7 o'clock p.m., Bishop Larry D. Trotter and Sweet Holy Spirit will be with us Sunday night. And we're just going to have an awesome time in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. It's 815, y'all. Praise God. A16. Amen. Thank God for our power. I pray that the rest of this week will be blessed, a blessing to you and that you'll have everything you need. Please don't forget Friday night. Friday night, the night in the water. That is our Friday night, night in the water, tarrying service with Bishop S.Y. Younger. Pastor Eric Thomas, they will be going in the water. We believe in God for miracles, signs, and wonders. The doors open at 9 p.m. sharp. Prayer and intercession will be going forth at 9.30 p.m. And then our service will start at 10 p.m. on the dot. Feel free, come comfortable, ready to just have a good time in the Lord and seek God. And we're believing that God is going to do some great things. I know Bishop Younger is coming and a lot of his church is coming too. So we want to make sure Greater Harvest that we are in place to host them, be hospitable, and to just have a good time worshiping and praising God together. Amen? So let's make sure that we are in place and spread the word. Facebook, your job, neighbors, all of that. Let them know what we have going on. Amen? Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for what eyes have seen and ears have heard. We thank you for what you have spoken tonight. Whew. Thank you, God, for speaking to us about dedicating ourselves to you. Father, I pray that you will continue to deal with us even after this service, oh God, and whatever it is that you have for us for the greater good that we need to do individually but also corporately to make sure that your will is done in the church, in our lives, and for this house, that you would do it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Give us traveling grace. 
arrival of mercies and we'll be careful to give your name the praise glory and honor bless our pastor strengthen him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet give him sweet rest bless his entire family and until we meet again we thank you for everything and the rest of this week will be blessed and full of favor in jesus name we pray and we thank you amen hug somebody and say have a good rest of the week in jesus name